know that we were supposed to go to the bullet factory and this is what you have on your list. Unfortunately, the bullet factory is closed and therefore we are going to a totally different area, uh, which is uh, fascinating, I believe. It has a huge, tremendous uh, biblical, uh, religious, cultural, national, and a few other um, uh, um, reasons to be important. And on top of that, it is a relatively rarely visited area because it's more or less in the center of Samaria. Uh, we will be touring the West Bank. Uh, part of the tour will be guarded by Golani forces. Okay, you will see it later. And so just uh, hopefully you will not be disappointed if you were expecting to visit the Bullet Factory. So it's not gonna happen now. Instead, we are going to go to Samaria and we're gonna visit ancient Shiloh and Mount Ibal, okay? If you're not familiar with these places, don't, um, don't be embarrassed. I would say most Israelis never been there before. Uh, some Israelis never even heard these names before. Okay, so having said that, let's get started. I will start uh, sharing my screen and it is here. All right. Can you see it? Yes. Can anybody approve? Yes, family. Okay, thanks. So, um, following the footsteps of Joshua, son of Nun, to Shiloh and Mount Ibal, uh, last week we were talking about uh, Joshua, Jesus, and this time, we're going to talk about Joshua, the son of Nun, or uh, Joshua bin Nun. This is how it's called. He's called in uh, the Hebrew Bible. And uh, he was the leader who replaced Moses. Uh, just to remind us, uh, Moses passed away without ever crossing the Jordan River, without ever entering the Promised Land. Um, I think it is so unfair. I mean, he, he's my favorite biblical figure. I always felt sorry for him, but that's what happened. Um, he passed away being 120 years, and this is why we always wish ours and others uh, to live until 120. And uh, he, he was buried somewhere in an unknown location in Jordan, okay? We don't know where his tomb is, and there is a reason to it. By the way, for the Muslims, there is no mystery about it because in the Muslim tradition, there is a tomb of Moses and that tomb is located in Israel, okay? This is a totally different topic, but just for your information, just to keep in mind, you know, that there is, if you're talking to a Muslim, so he might be visiting the tomb of Moses, which is not far away from Jerusalem, okay? Forget the Muslim, we will be back to them though, no, but anyhow, so, Moses passed away and he was replaced by Joshua, the son of uh, Nun. And Joshua was the one who crossed the Jordan River and he was the leader who led the 12 tribes into the conquering on the, of the promised land. And he was the one who led them to Shiloh and he will be our leader for Shiloh and Mount Ival. So we are about to start. This, this is the view from uh, Shiloh, that's what you see when you are there. Just wanna remind that this is the uh, pay as you wish for, and so donations are appreciated. So before we actually start touring, <laughs> uh, happy Purim. Uh, since uh, gathering celebrations and uh, nothing like that is still uh, not not possible here. So this is what we did today, just a few hours ago in our Moshav. You see, uh, this is a tiny little tractor with a, um, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> with uh, my kids and other kids uh, dressed like different animals. This is a friend of mine, Sharon, and this is my pickup. Uh, this goat here sitting on the pickup is Noam, and uh, that goat here standing on the tractor, this is Noam as well. And um, here next to Noam, this is my daughter, Yael. She was aligned, but it's not so obvious. 
So uh, instead of bringing kids together and uh, giving them candies, you know, the Mishloach Manot, so we're just driving my, I was driving the pickup and a friend of mine here, uh, he was driving the tractor and this is how we tore the Moshav just in between the houses and uh, deliver the, uh, the candies, the Mishloach Manot. So this is the best we could do. And I really, really pray that next year we will have a normal pouring, but you know. So um, happy pouring to all. And now we can officially start our tour of the Maria. So this is a uh, Google Earth map, of course. Um, I don't expect you to understand much of it, but I, just for your general orientation, this yellow um, star here, this is Ariel. Okay, Ariel is located maybe 35, 40 minutes east from Tel Aviv. This yellow uh, star here, this is Tzurigal, uh, which is located about 20 minutes drive from where I live, okay? And then Netanya, Netanya is a bit too far, but Netanya is located just above this upper left corner, okay? Uh, we will be visiting Shiloh, which is down here, this red, um, what do you call this figure? Oh my gosh. Hmm? Somebody, please. What do you call this Circle. red? Oval. Oh, it's oval. an oval. 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 Oh, right. Yes. Oval. Okay. Thank you. All right. That's it's it. An el ellipse. Yes. It's an ellipse. It's an ellipse. Okay. It, it is both. All right. Thank you. So anyhow, this I will be using the word oval. This is simpler. So the lower oval is Shiloh, and this is where uh, you can see me sitting now. Like my virtual background is Shiloh, and from here we will be driving straight forward up north. That will take us about an hour drive to our next destination, which is Mount Ibal. All right, or Ibal. This is how we actually pronounce in Hebrew. So. Um, Shiloh is about an hour, an hour, 10 minutes drive from Tel Aviv. That's it. And the other names, almost all of them, uh, you don't have to read them, but we are talking about very few Jewish locations, very few Jewish settlements surrounded by Arab Palestinian settlements. And of course, just to remind us that we are touring the West bank today. Now, if we take a closer look yet using uh, Google Map, so we will be touring ancient Shiloh or Tel Shiloh, you know, Tel is uh, an archaeological hill, an archaeological site, so this is it here, okay, this is uh, where we will spend our time. Uh, while this settlement is a brand new modern town of uh, Shiloh, which is literally expanding as we speak. It started with a few dozens of families. Now we are talking about a few hundreds, and it's getting bigger and bigger here at the lower part of the photo. Uh, you can see a neighborhood which is under construction. And generally speaking, Shiloh is expanding to the right, uh, meaning east, getting bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, probably the biggest cluster of uh, Jewish population north of Jerusalem. So that's me. Uh, you are standing. Uh, you are standing right next to me. And the reason why I want you to see this photo, actually, two reasons. Um, even three. One is because this is what we see on our way. We are about five minutes, four minutes drive from Shiloh. Okay, we will keep driving uh, south from here, straight forward. I'm facing north now. And right behind me, I want you to see this very nice, very fertile, very flat valley, okay? And I would like you to keep in mind that we have a flat, fertile valley, which is right next to Shiloh, okay? This is important. We will be back to it in the future. And um, this is what the Bible tells us about the location of Shiloh. You see, there is an annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh. We have no idea what festival that was. Okay, we have different understanding, but we don't know. It doesn't mention. But there is an annual festival of the Lord in Shiloh, which lies north of Bethel. That's true. East of the road that goes from Bethel to Shechem. 
okay, Shechem, Nablus, these two ancient biblical locations, you see there is a bus stop, okay? That bus stop is located next to the road, which is exactly precisely the same road which is mentioned in the Bible, okay? It was paved, but that's it. This is the ancient road which connected Beit El and Jerusalem with Nablus. We will be driving exactly this road later on our way towards Nablus, towards Mount Ibal. And Shiloh is also located south of Lebona. All right, okay. Now, if we take a look to the top of this hill, this is a modern Jewish settlement called, surprise, Lebona, right? Now, there is a road which is, we don't see it here, but there is a road which ascends from this fertile valley. Actually, you can see the beginning of it, okay, here. And then it starts climbing. It's a pretty steep, tough road getting all the way up to the top to Lebona. And you know what a road which is getting up, what is an ascent called in Hebrew? Well, it's called Aliyah, right? So Aliyah is an ascension of the Jews to Israel. And there is another word which is with the same root, and this is Ma'ale. So an ascent to Lebona, a, a road which ascends to Lebona will be called in Hebrew Ma'ale Lebona. Okay, literally, ascend to Lebona. Why is it so important? Because in the book of the Maccabees, we read that the first battle between the Maccabees and the Greek took place at, yes, Ma'ale Levona. Okay, so on our way to biblical Shiloh, we can see the location of the first battle between the Maccabees and the Greeks, and the Maccabees won. Okay, so um, we should keep that in mind before next um, final part. So, welcome to ancient Shiloh. This is myself again. And here in Hebrew, if you read Hebrew, it says Shiloh Hagduma, meaning ancient Shiloh. So just before we finally enter this building, which is sort of a, uh, well, welcoming visitor center, uh, a moment of Hebrew, okay? It is all about a dot, you see? Well, I apologize for those who read Hebrew, but I'm not sure everybody can read Hebrew, so, and this is important, you see? Uh, this is the letter Shin, okay? Now the Shin can have a dot on the right, and then it will be pronounced Sh. On the other hand, it can have a dot on the left and then it will be pronounced S. All right, okay. And since the ancient Bible did not have these dots, so if you don't speak the language constantly, so you don't know whether this word should be pronounced SH or should be pronounced S. And therefore, Shiloh, this is how it is spelled in Hebrew, Shiloh, in some translations of the Bible will be Shiloh, which is the right version, but it also can be Silo. Now you can see why, because we're using the same letter Sh. Okay, but let's agree that it is called Shiloh, and that's what we're gonna call it. Hmm. Okay, we entered through this door, and what you see in front of you is a very nice, very welcoming gift shop. And uh, this is a great place. Like normally when the tourists enter, they, they start, you know, they basically disappear and it's very difficult to start the tour and you always have no time. And it's like, oh no, that's what the guide says when he enters this place because, you know, it makes things difficult. But for tourists, it's a great fun. But now we're not going to spend too much time there. I just want to draw your attention. You see here, we have a gloss box okay this is not for sale this is just a display um i don't know if you know what this is but this is something very important and this is actually the main reason for us to be in shiloh okay so look at it we will be back to it if you already recognize that's fine so uh we are welcomed by blossom almond trees as you know i love those very much and this is where you can sit down and have your sandwich if you're hungry and then we proceed. And as we start walking into the side of ancient Shiloh, again, we see this map, okay? What is important for us on that map is that that map shows us the general direction of the wanderings of the Ark of Covenant and the tabernacle. 
Now, normally they are together. I mean, normally you put the Ark of Covenant, the Abon and Brit, in uh, uh, and the uh, into the uh, tabernacle, into the uh, tent of meeting. Okay, they, these are the same thing. And that's how it started. You see, this is Gilgal. This is approximately where the Jewish uh, tribe, the tribes of Israel, crossed the Jordan River. And then we have this this green direction. Okay, the it moved to Mount Ebal. We will be uh, uh, to sorry to uh, Shiloh. Okay, uh, to Shiloh, and that's where we are. But then, unfortunately, they got separated. Okay, and. Again, we will be back to that story, but I just want you to see that to begin with, as soon as the tribes of Israel crossed the Jordan River, the Ark of Covenant and Tabernacle were placed in Shiloh. This is the first place of worship, actually. And then the Ark uh, of Covenant was taken from here to Afek and then to Ashdod and to God, and, and then eventually it made its way to Jerusalem. But to begin with, that's where it all was. The whole assembly of the Israelites gathered at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. Here, I mean, right here. Another great significant event which took place right here is Joshua cast lots for them, them, the tribes of Israel, of course, the seven tribes, the other already got their shares in Shiloh in the presence of the Lord, and then he distributed the land to the Israelites according to their tribal divisions. In other words, if you ever ask yourself where and how, and like who decided who will settle where, which tribe had, will settle where, so that actually happened here in Shiloh. Again, so we being here in Shiloh, we're not just talking about the first location of worship, the first um, you know, home of, of the Lord, but also this map of the division of the promised land. So we are in Shiloh, in the land of Ephraim, Ephraim, uh, one of the sons of Yosef, and the land of Benjamin is just a bit south from here, okay, all the way to Jerusalem, and then we have the tribe of Judah, and up here you can see this huge huge share of land which belonged to the tribe of Menashe. Half of it was on the east side of the Jordan and the other half was on the west side of the Jordan. The reason why I want you to see that is because, first of all, I live in the land of the tribe of Menashe. And so my regional council is called Menashe. That's, that's the name of the regional council because that's where we are. And the other reason is because now we are in the land of Ephraim and Mount Ibad is in the land of Menashe. All right. Well, I hope you are convinced that we have a very good biblical reason to visit Shiloh. Okay. I hope you are convinced. And another reason. Look, um, this is where the Jewish Valentine Day, uh, which is called Tu Bishvat, was born. Now, I have sort of a personal connection to it, so let me put it in place. So the whole thing starts with a very, hmm, well, said is an understatement. I mean, a, a horrible, a, a, a tragical, an incredible story about a concubine being raped and killed by some of the men of the tribe of Benjamin. And it was so terrible that the other tribes started a war against the tribe of Benjamin. And eventually they won the war. And then they felt sorry. And then the other tribes decided that, hey, it was wrong. We want the Benjaminites with us. But they already swore to God that they will never ever let their daughters marry men from the tribe of Benjamin. And therefore the tribe of Benjamin could not be saved. And then, they found a solution. And that's the solution, you see. They instructed the Benjaminites, saying, go and hide in the vineyards and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyards, and each of you sees one of them to be a wife. That took place at Tu Be'av, which is around mid-July 
in our uh, modern calendar. Uh, you know, I always doubt if, if like, this is a horrible story. I mean, they raped a concubine and then they raped other women, all right. Uh, the, rib, the rabbinical explanation is that uh, the girls actually knew what is going on and then they got married and then they actually loved each other and therefore this is considered to be the Valentine Day and we bring flowers and candies and you know we celebrate, we go to um, bed and breakfast. We, we literally celebrate uh, the Valentine Day on uh, Tu Be'av. And I told you that I have sort of a, uh, well, sort of a weird personal connection to this story. Um, so that's because, you know, my last name is Newman, you know that, but uh, my maiden name is uh, Azbe, A-Z-B-E-L. Now, why do I tell you that? Because Azbel is the Russian uh, transliteration of uh, the Jewish name Ashbel, A-S-H-B-E-L, and Ashbel is the son of Benjamin. He is the grandson of Jacob. So um, that, that means that I came from the tribe of Benjamin. And without Tubeav, I would be never born because, uh, you know, um, the tribe of Benjamin would, would have disappeared. So I am connected to Tubeav and to Shiloh. And, uh, you know, that's funny. There are quite a few uh, people living in Israel today with the last name Ashbel. And most of them are Yemenites, uh, okay, Jews coming from Yemen, uh, while um, I came from Russia, of course. And in Russia, it was a very, very uh, unusual, um, unique name. So this is a, a, you know, another proof to the fact that this name is so ancient, biblical, and then, you know, uh, the Babylonian um, uh, um, no? Uh, exile and you know some moved to here and others moved to Yemen. So anyways, uh, this is Tubeav and the Tubeav is celebrated annually except of the COVID-19 times in Shiloh. These are the vineyards, okay? These are the modern vineyards of Shiloh. We have festival, we have girls wearing white, okay? Nobody rapes anybody and they simply dance in the vineyard and this modern settlement of Shiloh, you can see some of its houses up here on the left. Uh, they started a few years ago, they started a project of planting the biblical kind of vineyards. I mean, you know, in archaeological excavations, every now and then you find some, you know, some seeds. Uh, the most famous seed is a date seed uh, from Sada, okay, which uh, gave birth to a date palm called Methuselah. And now uh, these guys in Shiloh, they planted uh, great seeds. Uh, they did some genetic research and they believe that, you know, these are the vineyards, exactly the same grapes as the original people of Shiloh saw. So it, it's a beautiful festival and I hope next, week, next year we will be able to enjoy it. So we walk further into, um, into the site and uh, we are about to enter this little building, uh, brand new of course, we will see some beautiful, um, beautiful presentation inside that. We are facing east now and again, we are in the ancient area of ancient Shiloh and right up here, this is modern, uh, modern settlement of Shiloh. We cannot see it from this specific angle, but here among, among these houses, there is that structure, okay? When you stand in front of that structure, which is in modern Shiloh, you can see downhill, you can see ancient Shiloh. What is this structure? Well, this is a synagogue. And again, this is a very special synagogue, very different looking synagogue. And again, I'm not sure you can, do you recognize what it looks like? What is it supposed to look like? Well, it's supposed to look like a tent, okay? That synagogue is built exactly according to the description of the tabernacle, which used to be in Shiloh. So this is concrete, but it's supposed to look like cloth. And here 
you can see a ramp which, which brings you to Ezrat Nashim, to the women's section. And if we take a closer look, that's what it looks like. Again, you see, we have a ramp exactly as it's supposed to be on, on the altar. And this, this thing here uh, looks like a four horn altar. Again, exactly as it is described in the Bible. So you're standing down here next to where the tabernacle used to be. And up above you, you can see this modern tabernacle. But now let's get into this building. And that's what we will see in there. There's a beautiful presentation made with holographic work. It's a brand new, it's a very high quality holographic uh, uh, presentation. Uh, we will see just a short fraction of it. It takes about 15 minutes or so. And so when you get there in person, highly recommended. Watch. Okay. Uh, this is the tabernacle. Again, it is exactly the size, exactly the measures as it is described in the Bible. And this is a combination of something temporary and something uh, we, which is on this location. Uh, we have a menorah, of course, uh, made of solid gold. We saw the replica of the menorah in Jerusalem uh, before. And interestingly, these cups, uh, the cups where the fire is, uh, in Hebrew, they are called meshukadim. Meshukadim from the word shaked. Shaked is an almond. So they, they had sort of a shape of the flower of the almond. And this is, of course, uh, the altar itself, covered by copper with offerings burning 24 seven and a ramp. You're not supposed to walk upstairs, you're supposed to use a ramp. And this is uh, another altar for instances with different instances and spices, which will, uh, you know, give good smell because uh, the offerings, which are animal sacrifices will not give you any good smell. And finally, and this is the holiest of the holy, this is the holy ark itself with the kuvim. And inside there, we have the Ten Commandments, which were broken by Moses. And then we also have the second Ten Commandments, which were made by him. So the broken ones and the whole ones are both stored inside the Ark of Covenant with the poles. So it will be possible to take it around, take it with them as they move from place to place. And here we proceed. And this structure has to do with another Joshua. Uh, well, do you guess which Joshua it is? I guess you are. We are about to enter it in a minute. Just before we get into it, on the right-hand side, okay, you can see a bunch of soldiers. Um, these soldiers here, by the way, they were, they're doing exactly what we are doing now, which is an educational tour. The soldiers are going to be uh, tour guides as their military uh, profession. And they were touring ancient Shiloh before they became tour guides. So we are standing, see, uh, this is the door we are about to use. And here we have mosaic floor and more mosaics and more mosaics. We are talking about mosaics made in the fifth and the sixth centuries. AD. And now we enter this structure. We have these narrow windows, three windows. Three is a very typical number for Christianity. So if you did not guess before, uh, this is a church. Okay. The structure itself was built by a uh, group of Danish archaeologists who excavated ancient Shiloh about uh, about 100 years ago in the uh, in 1920s. They found the mosaic floor. They realized that they're at a church and they built a church. So basically the floor is like 15 centuries old while the, the rest of it, the structure itself is only about 100 years old. It is facing east as church should do. And as it is facing east, again, you can see the houses of modern Shiloh where these windows 
which you can also see through the windows is another almond tree, which reminds us of the menorah, you know, so there is a very strong connection between Judaism, Christianity, and ancient and modern and nature and Bible. It is, it is a beautiful place here. Uh, let's take another look. Uh, this is the mosaic floor. There is a Greek inscription here, uh, which um, prays for uh, the health and uh, prosperity of the people. And here, it is a bit hard to see, but there are uh, Arabic graffitis. I mean, you know, the Christian dance uh, build the walls and then the local Arabs just, you know, wrote their names and uh, the understanding of the word. I don't read Arabic, so I can tell you what it, what it is exactly. Another piece of the mosaic floor, look how beautiful it is. I mean, it is all natural stones. It is original. Everything here is original and at least 15 centuries old. And in this corner, look at this beautiful decoration. Well, this is obviously a Star of David. Uh, it has nothing to do with Judaism. I mean, as you probably know, the Star of David became a Jewish symbol relatively late, relatively recently. And uh, in the Byzantine period and even prior to that, uh, Star of David was considered to be just a beautiful, you know, just, just, um, just a decoration. Uh, what is even more weird uh, for us today is that Star of David was quite a popular decoration with no religious significance to it. And another popular decoration was a uh, swastika. So sometimes uh, in a synagogue, in a church, you can see a Star of David and a swastika when ne one next to the other. Yeah. Why not? And we keep walking and the next structure we see is this. This is an abandoned mosque, which is called the Mosque of the Orphan, okay? In Arabic, uh, and you can see the Arabic name here is Jama al-Yatim. Yatim is an orphan in Arabic. Uh, the Hebrew word for our orphan is Yatob. So uh, the Mosque of the Orphan. Who is the orphan? We have no idea, okay. Uh, but the fact that there is a mosque proves that that used to be a Muslim village and it was a Muslim village indeed up until uh, late 19th century when it was abandoned. So it has nothing to do with uh, Zionism or six days war. Uh, these are the Arab people of that village on the photo. The name of the village, by the way, actually helped us a great deal to understand what this place is for us, because the mosque is called the Mosque of the Orphan. Well, so, but the village was called Sayloon, okay, Sayloon. And Sayloon sounds very much like Shiloh. And the name of the village was the First reason for European archaeologists in the end of the 19th century to start excavating this place and not any other one. And then come to the conclusion that this is Shiloh. By the way, are we sure that this is Shiloh? Yes, we are. Why? I will show you later. Okay? But they started suspecting it because of the name of the village. And look. They were excavating right next to this wall of the mosque. And then they saw this a bit weird looking stone. It's just part of the wall. Do you see that there is something weird about this stone? Well, if you don't, so look, this part here. This looks like a little horn. They found another stone looking exactly the same with another horn. So probably these stones formed an altar, because we know that the altar is supposed to have four horn in the four corners. Yeah, this is pretty amazing. I'm sure the Muslims didn't pay attention to that stone, but for us, it means so much. So the mosque is around here, the upper left corner, and then we walk upstairs and we see ruins of the Byzantine period 
Shiloh, same period when the church was built. And then we keep walking upstairs, more ruins, more walls. Well, we found a source of income. You see, this is a crushing stone. And this is a, a Beit Habad. The Beit Habad means uh, an oil press. And by the way, we have plenty of olive trees around us today, as well as vineyard. Uh, this uh, area belongs to the early Muslim period. Again, nothing to do with the Bible, but same location. And more ruins and some uh, water cisterns. And finally, we ascend to this modern structure, which is standing on top of that hill where ancient Shiloh was located. And this tower is called the Tower of the Seer, okay? The one who sees things. In Hebrew, it is Migdal Haroe. Migdal is a tower and Roe is a seer. Uh, do you know who is called the seer in the Bible? Just curious. Okay, well. Samuel. <laughs> Samuel, exactly. Thank you, Samuel. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I can see that you uh, took your Bible classes. Yeah? Okay. Right. So uh, in the Bible, the seer is Prophet Samuel. And actually, I've mentioned quite a few reasons for us already to be in uh, Shiloh. And I did not actually mention yet, maybe, well, I don't know if this is most most important reason, but one of the most important reasons. And this is the fact that Prophet Samuel was a priest here in that tabernacle here. And Prophet Samuel was born because of an event which took place here in Shiloh. Okay, just to remind us, Prophet Samuel, his father's name was Elkanah, and his mother's name was Hana. Okay, Hana, Hana. Now, in in English, it, it's a name. All right, but in Hebrew, uh, the the name Hana comes from the word Lachon, to to feel mercy for. That's her name, Hana, and she had no children. Now, Elkanah unfortunately had two wives, and the other wife. She had children, and therefore Hannah felt even more miserable. And so she was so miserable and so unhappy that she came to the tabernacle when Eli was the high priest, and she prayed to God, and she prayed so hard that God heard her, listened to her, and Eli, the priest, told her, don't worry, go home, you will have a son, and she promised that this son will be dedicated to God. This son was indeed born, and he was brought back to Shiloh to become the servant of God in the tabernacle to help Eli, and eventually replaced Eli after Eli passed away. So his name, as we know, was Samuel. Now, again, we have to listen to the Hebrew name. The Hebrew name is Shmuel. Shmuel. And that's the reason I acknowledge the Bible. Hana said, Min ha'el I, I borrowed him from the God. I mean, it's not for me to keep. It's for me to raise for a while and bring him back to be the servant of God. So this place is dedicated to Shmuel, to Samuel, and this is the Tower of the Seer. So let's get in. This is what we see inside. You see, these are the artifacts which were found in Shiloh. These are the artifacts on display, and we have a photo of other artifacts which are no longer here. Um, this vessel here is uh, it has a special name in archaeology? It's the collar neck vessel, that's what it's called. And these collar neck vessels they, they exist only in one period of time, only in one archaeological level uh, layer all over Israel. And this is the layer of uh, the Hitnachalut, the taking over of the land. 
the, er, the uh, first iron period, 12th century BCE, all over the place. That was the capital of the tribes before Jerusalem became the capital of the kingdom. This is what we see on the wall, okay? This is great. I mean, you are invited to touch Shiloh's past. You know, you normally, you cannot touch things and everything is closed in the museums and it, everything is off limits and don't touch it and don't, but here, you're welcome to touch it. And I love, I, I love Shiloh for this reason as well. This is a replica of a mosaic inscription, which was found on the floor of a Byzantine church, which was replaced by the mosque. Remember the mosque? Okay. And why is it so important? Because here, if you read Greek, it says, see lo. Okay. And we already agreed that Silo is Shiloh. And this is an inscription which actually prays for peace for the people of Shiloh. And this is the proof that this place is indeed biblical Shiloh. So when the archaeologists found this inscription, they were so happy. We walked to the second floor, and there is another movie. We will see just a uh, you know, maybe a minute of it. It's a relatively long movie of about 20 minutes and it tells the entire history starting with the tribe of Benjamin and uh, the celebrations in Shiloh in the tabernacle and then Chana and then Shmuel, the little boy brought to Eli, the high priest. And that's how it starts. Go now to the place in Shiloh where I first made made a dwelling for my name. Okay, this is from the book of Jeremiah. Yeah, so this is once again, this is uh, the tabernacle and the altar with the burning sacrifices. And this is Joshua, the Nun, Joshua, the son of Nun, who tells the representatives of the tribes Go ahead and find your shares. Uh, these are supposed to be the celebrations in Shiloh, you know, for the high holiday. Amen. And, the, and the priests giving their blessings. And this is young. Shmuel, future prophet Samuel the seer. This is Hana, and this is Eli, the high priest, who told Hana that she will indeed have a son, and now he is taking him to his home. And these are the two evil sons of Eli, Pinchas, and Hophni. They were really bad guys. I don't even want to think about this moment when the mother gave his her son away. So let's move forward. Um, the end of Shiloh. Well, uh, it is not mentioned in the Bible. Okay, we, we don't actually know when and how and why was Shiloh abandoned. We do know that it was abandoned up until much, much later period. But we do read in the Bible that there was a battle, there was a crucial battle between the Israelites and the Philistines. And that battle took place in Evan Ha'ezer, okay? Evan Ha'ezer is identified with an Arab town, which, which is no longer exists, but an Arab town called Izbet Salta. And this is next to Rosh Ha'ain. Actually, Rosh Ha'ain grew so big that it is inside Rosh Ha'ai now, and this is the industrial zone of Rosh Ha'ai. So we are about 40 minutes drive east from, uh, no less, 30 minutes drive east from Tel Aviv. So the Israelites, they really decided to take the Ark of Covenant with them to the battle against the Philistines because they were sure positive that if the Ark is with them, so God is with them, so they will win. It never happened. They lost. And the Ark of Covenant was taken 
as a prisoner of war by the Philistines. It was taken to Ashdod and then to Gad and then to Ekron and finally it made its way to Beit Shemesh and then to Kiryat Yarim and only later King David took it to Jerusalem. When Eli was announced that the ark is lost and his sons are killed, he fell back and died, probably of a heart attack. And probably this is when Shiloh was abandoned and ruined as well. By the way, this story of the covenant, of, of uh, the Ark of Covenant being taken by the Philistines from here, okay, from Isbet Salda, from Evan Ha'ezer to here and here and there. And eventually the Philistines decided to get rid of the Ark because it gave them too much trouble. The Ark was brought back to the Israelites. It was brought to Beit Shemesh, okay? Beit Shemesh is a big city, modern city in Israel, but Beit Shemesh has an ancient location, archaeological, huge archaeological site. And in a few weeks, we're going to have a wonderful presentation by one of the archaeologists who excavated ancient Beit Shemesh. Okay. All right. So we watched the movie, we walked out of here. These are my colleagues. Noam had an exam, so he could not join me. So this is Ati and this is Aviram, uh, my friends and colleagues. We were touring together. So just we walked out of the Tower of Hawa and see what we have underneath. Okay, it's literally underneath. What is it? Hmm? It is the mikveh. Okay, another 100% Jewish structure. And then finally, we're looking at this empty, barren, flat area, just a bit north of uh, the Tower of the Seer. And this is believed to be, most archeologists agree, that this is where the tabernacle used to be, okay? It is big enough, it has exactly the shape, exactly the size. Obviously, we have no traces of the tabernacle, but if you think about it, what kind of traces, what kind of remains could you possibly see of a, uh, of a tent, okay? It, it, it could not survive, but it was probably here. Here in the corner, we can see a little fraction of uh, a Canaanite wall. And that's it for Shiloh. Once again, my favorite album. On trees. I know that I have only 10 minutes, but I don't need more than that. Ilana, don't worry about it. So we will we will drive north for uh for an hour, okay, which will take us just a sec. Here we are. We made it. This is a satellite, uh, not a satellite, sorry, a Google Earth uh, view of the northern part of Samaria. And we are here. Okay, this is our destination. You can see this red star. This red star is located on the northeast slope of a mount, which is called Mount Ival. Okay, Ival or Ival. So north is upper right corner. This is north. And here, you can see the Dead Sea. Can you see it? The blue stuff here next to Jericho. This is the Dead Sea. And therefore, this is the direction of the Jordan Valley. All right. Let's take a uh, closer. Oh, yes. Okay. Before we take a closer view, I would like to introduce you this gentleman. I used to know him. He passed away. Um, six years ago. He was um, a neighbor of mine, uh, Professor Adam Zortal, uh, professor of archaeology, one of the uh, leading archaeologists in Israel. He uh, lived in a kibbutz, kibbutz en Shemer, which is uh, five minutes drive from here. This is where my, uh, uh, my children's school is located. Uh, as you can see, he could hardly walk. Uh, he participated in Yom Kippur War in Sinai. He was um, 
wounded very, very hard. Uh, one, he was in hospital for a year and, and he, he could hardly walk. And even though he could hardly walk, he made um, the most complete, most detailed, most difficult survey of the land of the tribe of Menashe, which took him 12 years. And among thousands of locations he found, um, he found this, okay? You, you can see that photo. And in order to understand what this is, we have to read these uh, phrases. And uh, well, I will make a long story short. Um, Moses told the tribes of Israel before they crossed the Jordan River, when you have crossed over to enter the land that the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey. And when you have crossed the Jordan, set up these stones on Mount Ebal. Okay, this is in the book of Deuteronomy. We are on Mount Ibal overlooking this huge Palestinian city, one of the biggest Palestinian cities today. This is Shechem, otherwise known as Nablus. Here it is again, but now we are looking just a little bit to the east and you can see Mount Gerizim. If you've been to, uh, to my presentation about the Samaritans, so that's where we were, on top of Mount Gerizim. And now I'm taking a photo of Mount Grizim and Shrem from Mount Ibal. And we walk closer. Again, this is a weird looking structure. Uh, when Professor Zatar first saw it uh, in 1982, it did not look exactly like that. It looked a bit more like a pile of stones, but he could see that there was something weird and special about the structure. We are walking to the structure. Now we are guarded by Golani soldiers here, and that's because this is Area B. Area B, according to the Oslo Accords, is, uh, well, it is controlled by Israel and Palestinians uh, in the same time. The military responsibility is Israeli, and the civil responsibility is Palestinian, which basically means that Israelis are not allowed to visit Area B unless there is a special permission by the military authorities. Okay, so this time we, we did have the special permission, and then we also had a military escort with us all times. So we made it to, to these ruins. Joshua, now I'm reading from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua built a mount about an altar to the God, to the Lord, the God of Israel, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool had been used. And well, again, we don't have the time. Half of the people stood in front on Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ibal. We saw how close it is. Afterwards, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as it is written in the book of the law. Let's take a... Uh... We are about 900 meters above sea level. It is windy, it's freezing. We are Mount Ibal. This is the valley of Bara. And this is Mount Kabir. Mount Kabir means huge mount. And this is where a settlement called Elon More is located. This is Jabal Shdoa and Itamar. Okay. And finally, let's take a real close view at what everybody, I guess, today agree is the altar, which was built by Joshua Binun as soon as they crossed the Jordan River. This is what we see in front of us today. This is the reconstruction of the altar. This is how it looks like, probably. This is the suggestion made by uh, Adam Zortal. And I want you to look at 
this, okay, again, there is a pile of stones, which is quite difficult to understand what it is. So let's take a closer view, okay? This is a ramp. This is definitely a ramp. Um, Unpressed stones. And the Bible tells us that for an altar, you have to have a ramp and no stairs. Okay. Another something. Okay, now we are looking again. We use uh, Google Maps. Here we are at this red star looking north. Okay, and we read these words. These words directing the Israelites to Mount Ebal. When the Lord your God has brought you to the land you are entering to possess, you are to proclaim on Mount Gerizim the blessing and on Mount Ebal. The curses. Mm. As you know, these mountains are across the Jordan, westward, towards the setting sun. Okay, it's a beautiful description. In Hebrew, it sounds even better. Westward, towards the setting sun, is a. Yo, uh, I forgot. Uh, is a. Uh, um, Shit. Okay, it will come back to me later. Anyhow, it sounds better in Hebrew, but it describes a road. It describes a flat road. And here, uh, this green triangle is on a natural valley, which starts around here, okay, in between Mount Ibal and Mount Grizim. And it goes all the way to the right, all the way uh, to the east. So it really makes sense that when the tribes of Israel crossed the Jordan River, they were expected simply to walk straight forward along this valley of Tirza, and, and then they will make it to Mount Grizim. It also said near the great trees of Moray. Okay, uh, great trees, that's English. In Hebrew, it is alone. Alone is an oak. So there are some great oak trees somewhere of more. More means in Hebrew, a teacher. But more is also somebody who directs, who points out. So alone, more. There is a great oak tree which shows you the way. There is a settlement nearby, which is called Elon Moray. And this is the valley, which indeed goes all the way to the east, to the Jordan Valley, to uh, the Jordan River, to a bridge, which, which is not functioning today, but it did function till well, relatively recently, called Geshe Adam, the Bridge of Adam. And uh, down here, you see, this is Fara. This is a... Uh, this is a uh, Palestinian town, Fawa, uh, which is identified as Tirza, which used to be one of the capitals of the Northern Kingdom of Israel. And these are the inner compartments of the altar. That's from the other side. And that's it. So I would just want to finish with uh, these words from the blessing of the priest. May the, Lord, Lord, may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. This is from the blessing of the priest. And may this land and all of us enjoy peace and prosperity and good health. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. And uh, this is the PayPal. So. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Uh, I can see that there are some, some things on chat. So I will stop sharing and I will look at the chat. All right. Okay. Well, um, yes, uh, I don't know. I still try to remember uh, what, what is the uh, Hebrew words for uh, towards the sun. Let me see. Ah, okay. I will find it later. Sorry. Uh, change the date to, to 
Oh, wow, it was one sorry, true. Yeah, Professor Zotal, of course, he passed away uh, about six years ago, not 106. No, 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 sorry. Yeah, and he died yeah. before he was born. No, 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 I mean, no way I could, could know him. I mean, no, all right. Um, and, okay, well, I see no questions. I mean, some people wrote that it was nice. But um, why uh, any truth that the ark is in Ethiopia? Okay, well, uh, first of all, nobody knows. I mean, the Ethiopians uh, totally believe that. Hey, Millie, uh, the Ethiopians totally believe that the ark is in Ethiopia. They even have a very convincing explanation to how how did it make it to Ethiopia. But we don't know. I mean, the Jewish tradition does not accept it, and we we have no proofs. You know, nobody ever led any scientists to do a radiocarbon analysis of the ark in Ethiopia or, or nothing like that. So it is an Ethiopian tradition and it could be right, it could be wrong. All right, okay, hmm. no questions. I'm surprised. I, I have, have to yeah. When you were showing uh, Shiloh or Shiloh, Near the end, just before the dancing with Joshua, on the wall it spelled Shiloh in Hebrew, and the dot was on the left side of the shin, not to the right, as you were describing earlier. Is there a reason for that? Uh, let me let me uh, take a look at it again because I uh, wait a sec. I never I never noticed myself. Let's. Uh... Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes? Okay. So why can't I move? Uh, wait a minute. I'm really curious about it now. You're talking about the uh, the film we saw in uh, in the tower, right? Right. A little bit yes. before the dancing. Okay. So before the dancing. All right. Let's... Uh, <laughs> Uh, just before that. Hmm? Julia, it looked kind of stylistic to me because all of the dots were kind of left of circle. Here? Oh, this is what you mean. No, 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 it's not on the left. It, it is sort of in, in the center, but it's not on the left. It's uh, Shiloh. In the Bible, it, like here, you see, it's uh, Barishona. Barishona is uh, first place in the beginning, okay? It's, uh, we, we normally put the dot a bit more to the right, but it is still a shin, and here it's Asher, which is, okay? I think there was one other spot where Shiloh was more to the right, at the beginning there, if you take a look at it, and you maybe do it up after the Zoom meeting and you got time to take a close look at it. Uh, but at what? I did not yet understand because what, what I showed you now, this is not what you mean, Alan? I thought there was another spot. Ah. Uh, uh, I don't But you're in the right time frame. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Okay, well, I will I will take a look at it because it's unlikely that they made a mistake. All right, anyhow, it is it is uh, Shiloh. All right, so uh, it's just it's just the font. Maybe. Yeah, Hamas is the font they use. The type of I think oh, right. right, yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Anything else you would like to say about anything? It was amazing, Julia, because it's something that, I mean, I've never been there and- I know, know most Israelis never been there. And, uh, you know, Shiloh is, uh, is easily accessible. You know, you can drive your car, but yet many people are sort of, uh, you know, sort of scared because this is the West Bank and, the total majority of people in cars, like you drive down the road and uh, all the other cars except of your car have the white license plates 
uh, uh, you know, the Palestinian ones. So, mm-hmm. so people are not very happy to go there and it is beautiful. And Mount Ibal, I mean, is, you have to coordinate with the military, you have to have military escorting you. So you have to, like, it, it's something to, uh, to deal with. And so most people never go. But you should know, is, but you should know there's no problem. No, 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 no problem at all. No, no I, I go to yeah. Elkanah and Shar Tikva all the time because I've got relatives there and I've been to. Yeah, Kenya. but it, this is the this is the deep you know. south, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. But no, mm-hmm. no problem. I mean, from Tel Aviv, it will take you an hour. Yeah, it's beautiful. It was wonderful. It's just wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. <laughs> Thank you, Lana. I can see you walking around. Walking <laughs> around. This is the apartment. Okay. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, if uh, if there are no further things to say, uh, you are welcome all to our next week uh, presentation. So the presentation will be about uh, street art and graffiti in Tel Aviv, uh, something uh, uh, the speaker calls uh, Tel Aviv uh, Street Museum, uh, art and graffiti. And uh, and the tour will be uh, following the footsteps of Sanhedrin, the uh, religious authority, uh, which had to leave Jerusalem and find a new place to exist and a new way to exist after the destruction of the temple. So we will be following the footsteps of Sanhedrin uh, in the Lower Galilee. <laughs>